Today, we're going to take a look at the latest Ubuntu version 20.10 Groovy Gorilla. So the first thing that you might notice is that the ISO for 20.10 is slightly bigger than the long-term support ISO. There's a difference of about 100 megs here. So this release of Ubuntu is just slightly chunkier. Uh, I wonder why that might be, what might be causing that from my research and testing prior to making this video. It looks like there were mostly just some minor UI changes. Uh, it might be the latest version of GNOME that's on Ubuntu that's causing this slight increase in size, but it's pretty minor, right? It's only 100 megs. Uh, that's not a big deal for most people. So the first thing that you would notice after installing it is this new default wallpaper, which I really like. This is the coolest one that I've seen on Ubuntu in a while. Now, like I said, Ubuntu is still using GNOME. This comes with version 3.38, and you probably know that GNOME is a desktop environment that I'm not very fond of, but that's what other flavors of Ubuntu are for, like Kubuntu or El Ubuntu. They come with different desktop environments. And even though GNOME is still a bit chunky in the Linux world when compared to XFCE or LXDE, this desktop environment along with systemd and all the other components of Ubuntu still causes it to idle at about 600 megs of RAM, which is still anywhere from three to four times less than you would get on a Windows 10 installation. Now, Ubuntu 20.10 also ships with the Linux kernel version 5.8. So it's only one version behind the bleeding edge kernel as of the time that I recorded this video. Now, the first major change to the user interface is in the application grid. So now you can manually move around your apps no more being forced to put things in alphabetical order. You can order them however you like. And you can also now have more than nine items inside of a folder within this view. So all you have to do to get to the rest of them is just swipe over to the left like that, or you can click on these dots down here to click through different tabs within this folder. And another change is that this application grid is now going to scale with your display. So users who have a high res screen, like a 4K display, they should now have a better experience with this application grid when they're using Ubuntu. And speaking of applications, you still have all of the classic apps that most people would use Bundled with Ubuntu, you've got Firefox as the default browser. And they also have the latest version of Firefox here. So you can see version 82 ships with Ubuntu. So you don't have to worry about updating after installing, at least not until Firefox 83 comes out. And we've also got the Thunderbird email client, and you've got LibreOffice for all of your Office applications. And speaking of LibreOffice, it now ships on Ubuntu with a new default theme that I guess you could say integrates with Ubuntu more. Like it doesn't really stand out as a different, app, different application. It almost looks like this application was developed by the Ubuntu devs as well. So if we go into tools and options, I can show you this new default icon style. So here you go. It's this one right here. And yeah, this is really good because, you know, obviously on a on Linux, when you're using applications that are all developed by different developers, you tend to get this thing that happens where things just don't look right. You know, they don't look as elegant as they would on the Mac OS or on Windows, where you basically have everything developed by the same people, or at least you have restrictions about how things can look. 
And it's really good to see that that problem, if you would even call it a problem, is starting to be resolved in modern Linux desktops because a lot of people still really care about how their OS looks more than just caring about how it functions. Moving on to more of the UI changes, the calendar here now shows any upcoming events, which is gonna be very handy if you have a busy schedule. And over here, we now have access to the restart button from the power menu in this top panel. In earlier versions of Ubuntu, you only had the suspend and the power off options, but now restart has joined the party as well. So that's going to save you an additional click for whenever you want to reboot your computer. And there's also an improved interface for logging in with your fingerprint. However, biometric logins in general still have very little hardware support in Linux, meaning it's pretty difficult to actually find a keyboard, a standalone fingerprint reader, or one that's built into a laptop that is actually going to work correctly in Linux. And I don't have one either, which is why I can't actually demo this feature to you. But hopefully in the future, manufacturers are going to put more effort into making their devices, making their fingerprint readers work on Linux. So eventually this might become a standard feature like we see in Windows. And one of the coolest new features of Ubuntu 20.10 is the way that it handles mobile hotspots. So if you have an ethernet capable laptop with a Wi-Fi card in it to broadcast that hotspot signal over, you can very easily connect a mobile device to it by just scanning this QR code. So there's no need to deal with annoying passwords and picking a unique name for the hotspot or worrying about connecting to the wrong one if you're in a busy area. Now, one of the features that you probably won't see yourself in Ubuntu 20.10 is the support for OEM kernels. So this means that a manufacturer can have Ubuntu be the default operating system that ships on their laptop instead of Windows, and they can get support for any of the unique hardware that's going to be in that laptop. And this is really big for Linux noobs, since these days installing an operating system on a computer is considered an advanced task. And this is also a good way to potentially grow the Linux market share in desktop computers. Windows is still the dominant player here, but that's mostly because it's the default OS on most computers. You know, if people had to go out of their way to install Windows like they do Linux, then its market share would probably be a lot lower and maybe even lower than Linux since, you know, Linux doesn't actually cost any money. I mean, you can tell from looking at these different computers here, uh, if you get equal specs compared to something that has Windows on it, it's going to be maybe about $100 cheaper since the manufacturer doesn't have to factor in that Windows 10 license key into the price of their computer to still be able to turn a profit. And another feature that home users probably won't really notice, but it is worth mentioning, is that the Ubuntu Ubiquity installer now comes with Active Directory integration. So that's going to be really great for enterprise users that might be considering having their end users use Linux in that environment. So that's about it for the new features in Ubuntu 20.10 Groovy Gorilla. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Bye now.